Hi guys, real quick before the video starts, please be sure to get your copy of my book, 12 Case Studies. Simply look at the description below. Okay, enjoy! Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about common upper extremity assessments um, in order to support your measurements and to create your goal. We're going to look at why we're going to use certain measuring tools. Everyone should know this. If you're OT, you should know this. It's manual muscle testing. A lot of times you'll see it abbreviated as MMT. So I have my handy dandy whiteboard that's going to help me answer this. So I can write this down for you guys. So MMT. All right. So to test manual muscle uh, strength, you would go through certain techniques that we were taught in school for what for those of you that aren't quite so sure is you know going against your resistance so you may let's first say for example you have someone make a fist and you tell them to hold that don't let you push them down and you you give them a lower resistance going the opposite direction and you say hold 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 to see if they can hold that and that helps you to grade the muscle range of motion assessment okay so this is where a ganiometer pops in right Okay, so we we're also trained as therapists how to use a ganiometer. So I'm not really going to dive into that part. Um, but if you want to know more information about it, just comment below and I can do more of a, a, a extended video. But I'm trying my best to try to keep this video under maybe five ten minutes. We'll see how it goes. Ganiometer. Okay, most facilities I would say have this. Some don't. Now this is to check to test. Um, hand strength. Does anybody know? Dynamometer. Exactly. Hand strength. All right. The next one. Now, if we're looking for uh, sensation, we want to test sensation. This one was new to me. Um, I'm going to write this one out for you guys. Sam's Weinstein monofilaments. So while I'm writing this out for you guys, I just want to give you a visual so you can see exactly the tool that is used and the assessment. And this also is really good for proprioception um, assessment, okay? Uh, one that I tend to use quite often and I really love doing is called sturgenosis, okay? Sturgenosis. Stur sturgenosis. So, say for example, you give someone a coin, you ask them to close their eyes, obviously with 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 their eyes closed and making sure they don't see what you're about to hand them. So you ask them to close their eyes and let's say you put a coin in your hand and you have them feel and you say, what is that you're feeling? What did I just put in your hand? And it could be anything. You, you be the judge. And if they're able to tell you what it is, that allows you to know how well their ability is through the assessment of sturgenosis. Got it? Okay. The next one, excuse me, hand dexterity. Okay. So let's say, you know, you want to check and see how good that fine motor control is. And we therapists like to say FMC for fine motor control. Okay. A cool little assessment tool you can use and um, test is called the Moberg Okay, Moberg pickup test. This is really good for checking and assessing the level of dexterity. Okay, and don't worry, I'll continue to, to give you guys um, more information if you request it. Okay, I know I'm kind of going quickly through these. Now, one thing that tends to get forgotten about um, when we're dealing with the upper extremity is edema. Okay, so let's say we have a patient that comes in and we do our intervention and we make sure that we provide them with um, some form of elevation while they're in their wheelchair or while they're in their bed to kind of help with that flow. I know some uh, therapists uh, really love doing, um, what's it called? I just, I just had a brain fart, guys. That's okay, when I remember, I will, I will post it somewhere here, okay? But pretty much it simply is, is it's manually moving the fluid. There are some contraindications with that, so be sure 
to get service competence when you're doing it, especially when you have C um, HF patients. Okay. Moving on, though, how do we test for edema? So to test for edema, and I like to call this the edema classification. Edema is something that we tend to see quite often um, when working in skilled nursing facilities. And you can also see it in other settings, but because I work in skilled nursing facilities, I'm going to just focus on that. Um, and a lot of times what we'll do is do positioning for edema, especially elevation. But it's also in, important to also know the interventions that you're providing if they are working. Um, so I'm going to explain to you how you can make your, your edema management measurable. The way for you to actually assess and have a starting point is using something called a flow meter. I want to kind of stick a little bit with edema here, and let's let's talk a little bit about the edema classifications. And I'm sorry if my lighting is kind of crazy, guys. I apologize. All right. So the first one is called one plus okay now one plus this is all a demon classification so i'm going to break down now guys so one plus one plus is considered mild it's mild pitting edema and there's slight there's very slight um in the there's very slight indentation with with one plus um and that tends to last i would say about zero to 16 seconds well more like 15 if you want to be exact. Sorry, my hand running, guys. So zero to 15 seconds. That's, that's you know, that's one plus a slight. Okay. Now, if we can keep going here, the next one is called two plus. Now, this is considerate, considered moderate. Okay, this is more moderate edema. And this, this still subsides rapidly, but it's still classified as moderate because of how long it lasts. And this one now is about, I would say about 16 to 20 seconds for moderate uh, pitting edema for your classification. Now, when it gets really bad, you're going into three plus, okay? So three plus, this is called, and we therapists like to say deep, and this is gonna go anywhere from 31 to 60 seconds, okay? And then when it's extreme, the highest usually, the highest uh, pitting edema we would document is four plus, okay, four plus, which is very deep. And now you're looking at greater than 60 seconds, greater than 60 seconds. So I know this is kind of quick. I try my best to try to keep it on the 10 seconds and I'm, I'm almost gonna make that, um, not 10 seconds, 10 minutes. Um, but please, if you like my videos, be sure to comment, give me something positive about it. No, no negative comments here. Um, be sure to comment below, be sure to like, share, tell your friends, tell your co-workers, tell your babies, whatever. Share the word. Be sure to pick up my book, 12 Case Studies, and I'll catch you guys later for another video. All right? Bye.